Welcome, in this lecture we are going to consider assessment of digital control technique for light load DC DC converters. So, here we will first talk about the we want to revisit the light load control method and we want to make a comparative assessment and then finally, we want to show some digital implementation of uh, PWM pulse keeping modulation then pulse frequency modulation particularly for discontinuous conduction mode. So, here if we talk about the discontinuous conduction mode as the load current decreases then if you take the efficiency. So, this switching loss particularly the driver loss this become fixed as a result if the output power decreases. So, this power become dominant and all switching frequency switching losses are basically frequency dependent and under light load condition this switching loss dominate because output power is getting reduced. So, as a result effective switching efficiency will go down. So, what is the way that means we need to reduce switching loss by simply reducing the effective switching frequency and there are many way to do that. The first way the popular light load control method pulse frequency control method which is you know maybe constant on time is a good example then adaptive on time control then also the hysteresis pulse it also comes under pulse frequency whenever the frequency varies. Uh, you know with the operating condition then we call about we talk we call them uh, pulse uh, frequency modulation. Another con more popular control technique is the pulse keeping modulation where the number of skip cycle changes as the load current changes and by that way if the load current decreases the skip cycle will increase. So, effective time period will increase as a result the switching frequency will reduce and the burst mode is another popular control method and as well as hysteresis control. So, all these details of this particular all this technique and as well as their MATLAB implementation are already presented in lecture 24 in our earlier NPTEL course. So, here if we talk about pulse width modulation under that means we are talking about the frequency is fixed. So, this is on under fixed switching frequency and this is our duty ratio d into t that is the on time. Now, if we consider duty ratio unlike in continuous conduction mode in a buck converter in ideal condition we know the duty ratio is nothing but the ratio of output voltage by input voltage. But in case of discontinuous conduction mode it is a nonlinear function and it also function of load current. So, if the load current decreases for a given input output voltage the duty ratio will decrease and this is clear from this expression and it will change the square root fashion. But at the same time under pulse width modulation if the load current decreases then it can be shown approximately the output voltage ripple also linearly decreases. But we do not need a very large very small ripple voltage because as long as the output voltage ripple is within the acceptable range then we do not need to further reduce because what we are losing here is the switching frequency is fixed and that is not desirable because it will result in a higher particular driver loss. So, in order to do that people people go for constant on time where this on time is constant you can see this on time is constant this is constant and if we keep the on time constant and if the inductor is constant which is generally constant then for given input output voltage this quantity is also constant. So, this quantity these are all constant quantity then it can be shown that switching frequency is linearly proportional to load current. So, we can take it the switching frequency from here it is clear the switching frequency is linearly proportional to load current and that means if the load current decreases switching frequency will decrease as a result the efficiency will increase. And it can be shown in this method again if the input voltage output voltage are constant then the output voltage ripple is more or less insensitive to uh, you know the load current and this is particularly true when the uh, when the converter operate under light load which is deep into discontinuous conduction mode. And the pulse keeping modulation also we have discussed. And in fact, we have considered you know pulse keeping modulation digital implementation. And in this particular method at the in analog case if you take the clock edge of this signal and it will compare if the V0 is greater than V rep it will skip the pulse otherwise it will take this pulse width and it will pass. 
and this method we have already explained and as the load current decreases for a given due to ratio the number of skip cycle increases as a result the time period de increases and the switching frequency decreases. So, this is also a very popular method. The burst mode control method it is an extension of pulse skipping modulation because here also this is effective like a pulse skipping. But in addition to that in earlier we have only compared output voltage ripple output voltage with the reference voltage that was a pure comparator. Now, instead of a pure comparator we have introduced a hysteresis comparator which can be approximately realized by this method. So, the difference here it is a pulse skipping modulation, but with an analog hysteresis band and this will make the operation asynchronous unlike in regular pulse skipping which will always send skip or charge pulse based on the age of the PWM clock, but here it depends on the uh, basically your band. If the inductor current hit the upper band irrespective of the clock it will simply turn off and again it will turn on when it hit the upper limit. So, this particular duration it operate in an asynchronous manner that is why in some cases the burst mode control it is very difficult to predict the power spectral density. So, that is one of the drawback otherwise this is a popular control method. Then we have discussed the digital implementation of PWM control and we have discussed the how to write the Verilog code of this and we have synthesized for implementing into FPGA based prototyping. And this we have discussed the inner circuit detail of this which is there inside the FPGA and we have implemented this inside an FPGA platform. We are not going to discuss this. So, this thing we have discussed in week 8 in detail and particularly lecture number 72 is started and we have continued till 75. Then we have also discussed digital voltage based pulse keeping modulation. Here again we are using A to D. So, now there is as if no comparator is needed because this itself will act like a comparator. And we have discussed in detail lecture number 80 how to implement this digital pulse keeping modulation and we have used we have also shown the Verilog HDL code for implementing this control logic. We have also discussed the voltage based constant on time control which is a fixed variable frequency control where we are keeping the on time constant and the switching frequency will vary linearly with the load current and we have discussed in lecture number 98, 95 how to implement this voltage based digital constant on time control using Verilog HDL how to program it and we have also implemented using FPG device. So, if we do for steady state characterization the pulse wave modulation the ripple voltage decreases load current which we do not want, but it results into a higher driving loss at light load because of using a higher switching frequency. But if you go to constant on time the switching frequency linearly varies with load current if the input output voltage is constant and we are keeping on time is constant anyway. And it is interestingly the output voltage ripple is more or less independent of load current that is why it is a very popular control method. In fact, majority of the commercial product goes by the constant on time this is a category of PFM pulse frequency modulation. But one of the drawback is that if the input voltage increases then this quantity increases as a result the ripple voltage increase and it may exceed the ripple uh, specification. And that is why you know we go by we have also discussed adaptive on time where instead of giving an on time by a timer we can generate this on time using a peak current limit and this is based on analog peak current and we have discussed in our earlier NPTEL lecture I think lecture number 24 lecture 24 in our earlier course that means control and tuning method that it can be shown in this method if the input voltage is fixed then M1. So, if V in is fixed V in is fixed then M1 is fixed. If M1 is fixed this is anyway fixed. So, your on time is fixed. If the on time fixed then it is like a constant on time control then it actually retain all the features including the switching frequency variation is load current that is already there. But what was major concern is that the ripple voltage variation with input voltage. Now, if you substitute this on time as a function of the slope and the peak current then it can be shown that approximately the ripple voltage is a function of peak current, output voltage then capacitor and inductor. So, now it is independent of input voltage and at the same time we know that output voltage ripple is already independent of 
load current in PFM. So, this is called adaptive on time where the on time will be automatically adapted because we are fixing the current ripple. So, when the input voltage increases then as if this will go like this again it will hit it will come back it will come back and then so that means the on time will get automatically reduced and ripple band will be more or less same. If the input voltage decreases then it will hit like this so it will automatically increase the on time. So, as a result the ripple voltage will be more or less same and you will retain the same feature of constant on time and it will automatically adjust the T on to optimize the efficiency because we want also high light load efficiency. And we have discussed in lecture number I think we are going to discuss uh, you know in the next lecture the implementation aspect detail implementation aspect and Verilog implementation of this adaptive on time digital control. But here what we are explaining here. So, we are considering that means this is our peak current if you take the analog and this is our sense inductor voltage that means sense voltage means the VSN which is the sense inductor current and it is a voltage form. So, and then when it hit then it continue to operate in DCM like that again goes. So, that means this is our T on which is coming out of the current loop and it will be adapted automatically. So, if we recall our traditional constant on time there the difference here we are retaining the same RS uh, flip flop which will decide the on of this Q out, but there we have generated this reset pulse from a counter where we have given a fixed timer to count the on time and then it will reset that RS flip flop. But here the reset is generated by a using analog current loop that is why it is a mixed signal implementation. But the voltage loop is still there which decide the triggering of the on pulse that means when to trigger the on pulse that will be coming from the voltage loop that is in digital. But once it is triggered how much will be the on time this will be decided by this loop. So, the on time will be decided by the current loop, but the triggering of the on pulse will be decided by the voltage loop. And we have also discussed that any constant on time commercial product will have a minimum of time and this we have discussed in detail in lecture 95 and 96. So, we are not going to discuss all this we have discussed. Only difference here we have replaced the counter with this current loop and this is the implement uh, waveform and here we have generated this trigger pulse because enable has to be generated and how does it work we have discussed this Q trigger is coming from the voltage comparator because we have taken an ADC, ADC and ADC was taking the feedback voltage and we know the ADC data since we do not have analog comparator this was compared with our N ref that is the reference voltage that is a reference command in digital because this portion is digital this portion is digital. Then what was the logic if ADC data goes below N rep that means that means whenever the output voltage falls below the reference voltage then you need to trigger this uh, count on constant on time. So, this is your QTR. Now, this QTR based on different possibility that we have discussed we will generate this all our S trigger circuit to detect the positive edges, but we know constant on time will also have a minimum of time that is also here logic and also during the start of the circuit if the circuit does not turn on for a long time then there will be an periodically external clock that will check the status. If the QTR is high that means if the output voltage is below the reference voltage and we have not yet started the constant on time operation then this clock will force to enable the constant on time. Once it is enabled then it will go automatically. So, that is why this is for you know checking the status and forcefully turning on the switch if the QTR is high. And we know once the constant on time is enabled then this enable pulse ca can come multiple times it will not respond as long as the current inductor current reaches the peak current limit because this will only get reset when this will come and this thing we have discussed. So, in summary we have revisited light load control method we have discussed uh, some assessment of various light load control method and we have shown some digital implementation of PWM, PSM and PSM control method in DCM which we have already presented 
different different lectures previous lectures and in the next lecture we are going to show the very log implementation of adaptive on time control that's it for today thank you very much